Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon when you are watching this video. In the earlier sessions, we discussed about various provisions in relation to the residential status determination and determination of tax incidence in respect of different types of SECs, particularly different categories of residential statuses of individuals, namely how a particular income will be taxable for ROR or NOR or non-resident NR and uh, most importantly the sections we have referred to in this particular chapter are section 6 that is for determination of residential status, section 5 that is determining the scope of total income or the scope of income or we can just simply call it tax incidence and we have section 9 very important one which is the incomes deemed to accrue or arise in India. Though there is section 7 which are deemed to be received in India, it's not that important. Section 9 is very, very important. That entire chart of section 9, everybody should be very thorough with that. And application of these uh, provisions also, we have solved some of the questions in which we applied them. Hopefully everybody understood the provisions as well as have developed the capacity to apply those provisions in problems. Let us continue the discussion on some more problems today and close this topic of residential status and tax incidence. This is also one of the questions in the ICA material. This is the question. Compute the total income. The question is total income in the hands of an individual, whoever he may be, aged 45 years for the residential statuses of that person if he is ROR, if he is RNOR, if he is NR. Once again, same person cannot be all the three. Only we are talking about what if he is ROR, RNOR and NR. But ideally in the examination, the answer has to be with the proper heading statement showing computation of total income. That's all. You don't know the name. That's it computation of total income for the assessment year 2020-21 that should be the heading particulars of course will be there and usually the particulars should be written in description all of them so whatever the particulars are there those particulars will have to be written here and then if uh, such amount is taxable the amounts will be written here totaled that will be the First, gross total income. If at all there are any section 80 deductions, after allowing them, what we get is total income. The question is about total income. So let us uh, uh, take one by one, point by point. So first point, interest on UK development bonds, 50% of which is received in India. Amount is 10,000 rupees. So we have to understand about this particular income, about three different SSEs. First of all, for ROR, without any second thought, entire amount would be taxable why is that because for ROR global income is automatically taxable so for ROR entire 10,000 rupees will be taxable irrespective of whether it is received in India or not received in India doesn't matter even if it is accrued outside India also it doesn't matter but here for ROR entire 10,000 taxable no doubt what about RNOR for RNOR or NR for that matter. RNOR and NR will have difference only when when we are talking about there is a business which is carried on outside India but controlled from India. Profession which is carried on outside India but set up in India. In that case only RNOR, RNOR will get attracted to the taxability. NR will not have a taxability in that case. Other than that RNOR and NR both are always same. Any income which is earned outside India will not be taxable for RNOR also, NR also. Here, this interest is on UK development bonds. So normally it should not be taxable for RNOR and NR. However, since 50% of that is received in India, means half of that is received in India, that should be taxable. Why? Simply because it is received in India. When any income is received in India or accrued in India, are earned in India. It is taxable for everybody. So this 10,000 is not earned in India. So it cannot be taxable for RNOR and NR normally. Since half of that is received in India, half of that only is taxable with the reason of that interest being received in India. 
so 5000 for r and or also and nr also that will be taxable in different different cases now the second point income from a business in chennai that is 20000 rupees 50% only is received in india it means 50% would be received outside india so these are the cases where people will be sometimes falling in the trap don't fall in the trap because you don't care about how much amount is received in india as long as the income is earned in india because this is a income from a business in chennai when the business is in chennai how does it matter where it is received it does not matter means what it will be taxable for everybody there is no exception here for every type of ssc it will be taxable for the simple reason the income has accrued in india business is in india so any income from any business or profession in india naturally will be taxable for rr also rnr also nr also so this 50% received in india is a trap don't fall for that uh, that is only for some people who will be unnecessarily thinking about the items of useless information so we should not fall in that category if there is any, any any information given in the question we should have a perfect judgment on whether it is useful information or useless information this 50% received in india is useless since the income is anyway earned in india it doesn't matter where is it received entire amount becomes taxable for all cases then the third point says short term capital gains on sale of shares of an indian company indian company received in london once again any sale or transfer of a capital asset which is an indian asset that will be taxable all cases amount is also incidentally same that is 20000 rupees why remember section 9 that there is a particular point wherein any income is earned by transfer of a capital asset situated in india so you may you may say that Uh, is it a capital asset shares is a capital asset or not of course it is a capital asset how do you know name itself is given it is capital gains capital gains is something that will be uh, earned by transferring a capital asset so shares is a capital asset so don't take unnecessary interpretations situated in india means how do we know shares are situated in india shares are not uh, like uh, land or buildings so that you can see Uh, nowadays the shares means are all in uh, dematerialized form popularly called demat form you cannot see them so that does not mean it is not an asset that does not mean it is not an indian asset it is a share of an indian company automatically it is a property situated in india naturally it is falling in that category uh, there should not be any unnecessary questions again on that how do we know it is indian because the company is indian there is nothing specially to discover or invent about it every information is given in the question all that we need to do is apply a proper provision what provision we have to apply section 9 once again income deemed to accrue or arise in india when if that income has arisen out of a transfer of a capital asset situated in india in this case particularly yes it is a capital asset related to india because it is a shares of an indian company whether it is received in london or mars also we don't care it will be taxable for all types of ssc's so it is entirely taxable for everybody that's it that is third point then fourth point dividend from british company received in london income earned outside india because this dividend is from british company received also outside india when it is earned outside india received outside india nothing will be taxable for r and r and nr that is for sure because it is accrued also received also both outside india no relation with india at all still it will be taxable for rr again for the simple reason for rr global income is taxable so even if rr earns any income on the moon or mars also it will be taxable no limitation is mentioned there anywhere in the world not only on the earth anywhere also in the universe if resident and ordinarily resident earns any income that would be taxable automatically so why the why is that because with there is no particular provision about only income received in india every income that rr gets is automatically taxable irrespective of the place of accrual irrespective of the place of receipt that is the nature of taxability for rr so enter 5000 will be taxable sometimes for few people a question will come sir dividend is exempt na 
section 1034 is there fantastic section uh, should we apply that here answer is no sir why 1034 is applicable for dividend received from a domestic company for in, for simple understanding indian company though there is a very slight difference between domestic company and indian company which we discussed in the definitions chapter doesn't matter much indian company if dividend is received from an indian company then it is exempt up to 20 uh, sorry 10 lakhs rupees uh, if uh, dividend is received from a foreign company then it is automatically taxable there is no exemption under section 1034 at all so 5000 fully taxable for ror nothing taxable for rnor and nr naturally why because income accrued outside india received also outside india so that is the fourth point now moving on to the fifth point fifth point look at that long term capital gain on sale of plant at germany okay first of all some capital gain happened whatever they said it may be we don't care where it happened sale happened in germany but 50 percent of the profits are received in india so irrespective of that for ror blindly 40,000 taxable everything is taxable for ROR so whether it is in Germany India doesn't matter entire 40,000 is taxable for ROR then the question comes what about RNOR and NR income is accrued in India or outside India absolutely it is accrued outside India why because this sale of plant happened in Germany so it is normally not taxable normally not falling under the purview of the Indian Income Tax Act but but there is a point here. What is that but point? That additional point is 50% of the profits are received in India. So when they are received in India, they are taxable in India. We don't care where they are accrued and all. So 50% only will be taxable. So 50% of 40,000 is naturally 20,000 taxable for RNOR as well as NR. That is in relation to long-term capital gains on sale of plant at Germany. Normally it should not be taxable for RNOR and NR. Since half of that is received in India, naturally whatever amount received in India becomes taxable for them. So 20,000, 20,000 for RNOR and NR. That is fifth point. Then we have the next point. Read that carefully once again. Income earned from business in Germany, which is controlled from Delhi, 40,000 is received in India. So, so many points are there here. Very carefully you have to observe this sixth point, crucial point. Every provision has to be meticulously remembered and applied here. First of all, for ROR, no provision, no big uh, thought process required. Automatically, 70,000 will be taxable. Doesn't matter. Germany, controlled, where, received, where, accrued, where. Everything is immaterial for ROR. Every income is taxable for ROR. So, enter 70,000 is taxable for ROR. No doubt in that. Now, the question comes for RNOR. For RNOR, once again, you have to read the sentence. Income earned from a business in Germany means income is accrued outside India, but that is controlled from Delhi. And we should know Delhi is in India. So it is controlled from India. Income accrued outside India, but controlled from India. In that case, is that taxable for RNOR? Absolutely yes. That is one of the cases where taxability arises for RNOR. If any business or any income is accrued outside India, but still it is business controlled from India, then such incomes are taxable for RNOR, but not taxable for NR. For non-resident, 70,000 will not be taxable. For RNOR, 70,000 will be taxable. See, when 70,000 is taxable, why should you care about 40,000? Because that is already part of 70,000. So don't worry about that for RNOR. Now comes NR. For NR, 70,000 definitely is not taxable because the income is earned outside India. If income is either earned in India or received in India, then only something will be taxable for non-resident. Is it earned in India, 70,000? No, sir. But is it received in India? Yes. Enter 70,000? No. How much is received in India? Only 40,000 is received in India. That means only 40,000 will be taxable for non-resident. Why? Not because of Germany. Because of 40,000 rupees received in India. Because of that, 40,000 is taxable for non-resident. For RNOR, Entire 70,000 is taxable since the business is carried out outside India but controlled from India. Because of that, RNOR gets full taxability in this particular case. Important point. That is point number 6. Then point number 7. Next one. Uh, this is also a kind of trap point. Profits from a business in Delhi but managed from London. 
so people will be more interested in london here naturally because it is outside india and all that but think once think twice does it matter no sir doesn't matter why business is in delhi when business is in delhi is it controlled from mars moon we don't care when the income is earned in india it is already taxable for everybody where from it is controlled who cares that is a completely immaterial information doesn't matter so 15000 is taxable for everybody why focus point focus point is delhi because business is happening in delhi which is in india so income is earned in india income earned in india taxable for everybody simple 15000 rupees 15000 rupees 15000 rupees for everybody the same will be taxable this additional information managed completely from london is useless information so don't fall for that trap next point uh, is that income from house property in london deposited in a bank at london but brought to india it is mentioned that it is computed what is the meaning of computed it means after giving a standard deduction of 30 percent under section 24a after giving that deduction only this 50,000. so it is not rent which is the word used here it is the income from house property that is also already computed so you don't need to give any further deductions from this 50,000 automatically will be taxable for ROR anyway because anyway everything is taxable for ROR however for RNOR how is that look at this situation and once again read the sentence income from house property okay where from it has arisen in London means outside India where it was received because it was deposited in a bank at London that means it was also received in London so where it is first received that matters receipt is a very important word receipt when it matters when it is first received it is received first in london then it was brought to india so should we say that it is received in india just because it is brought to india absolutely not what provision we have to apply there what logic we have to apply there we have to apply the logic of what is a receipt and what is a remittance receipt is the one which is first received a remittance is the one which happens later so here first receipt happened in london Remittance to India happened later. Remittance to India is not considered as received in India. But first received in London means definitely received outside India. So in a nutshell, where this 50,000 is earned outside India, where this was first received or received outside India. So is there anything taxable for RNOR and NR? Nothing. So for both of them, nil, nil will be the taxable amount. Nothing will be taxable for RNOR also n are also so the remittance which has happened later will not tantamount to receipt you cannot call that as received in india just because it was brought to india later that is a point very important point you should write a working notes for that of course for each of them why you have treated like this you can write a working notes for each point there can be a working notes uh, but don't expect such big question in examination if this question given it should be easily for 10 marks or more which is a rare scenario this is mostly for practice out of these points only some for five six points eight points can be chosen that's a different story but the entire question as it is may not come in the examination so don't worry about the size of the question more focus on the points which are given in the question so we are talking about income from house property in london deposited also in the bank in london means earned outside india received outside india so not taxable for rnor and nr however it is taxable for ror since he, every income is taxable for ROR. That is point number 8. Then point number 9, which is uh, interest on debentures in an Indian company received in London. This is interest, uh, not dividend. Understand the difference once again. Don't try to mix the things up. Dividend is different, interest is different. Dividend is on shares, interest is on debt securities like debentures, bonds, etc. Anyway, whatever it is, we should we care about this? As far as ROR is concerned, of course, 12,000 rupees directly becomes taxable for ROR. Any income is taxable for ROR. For RNOR and NR, we have to think twice. For that, you need to read it carefully. Interest on debentures in an Indian company. When the interest is on the debentures related to an Indian company, simply that becomes taxable in India. Why? Because that is deemed to accrue or arise in India. Which provision will apply once again? Section 9 interest interest on the loans if at all the loan is given for the purpose of a business in india which is nothing but an indian company issuing debentures and uh, somebody purchased it rnr purchased it 
and later by purchasing those debentures they received interest from an indian company so ultimately to whom they have lent this money whatever they have purchased the debentures they have lent to an indian company so naturally that money for which purpose that money has been used is supposed to be utilized in india because the debentures are issued by an indian company the word there is indian company so once it is an indian company automatically that will be taxable for rn war and nr also even though it is received in london so income has accrued in india for sure received no not in india anyway it doesn't matter one of them is enough either accrual or receipt or both any one of them is also enough either if it is accrued in india also it is taxable for all even if it is received in india also it is taxable for all both also of course taxable for all so for rnr and nr also this 12000 will be taxable since this is interest on debentures of an indian company that is also included in the gross total income or total income of the ssc that is 12000 rupees now next point 10th point fees for technical services rendered in india but received in london see when they are rendered in india naturally it is accrued in india earned in india so naturally it will be taxable for all cases nothing special definitely it will be taxable for all cases why straight question straight point because services are rendered in india enough for that that is completely taxable in all cases next point profits from a business in mumbai managed from london same way earlier also there was some attempt to misguide us don't fall for the trap don't worry about london and all that london hong kong singapore wherever from it is managed we don't care because the business is in mumbai means profit earned in india when it is earned in india it has accrued and arisen in india once that happened it is taxable for everybody it doesn't matter where from it is managed so that is a unnecessary additional information for just diverting the attention don't fall for that trap like this many traps will be there in income tax paper be very careful of them so how, when we can be very careful of them when we can identify them when we are thorough with the provision that's what thoroughness means so so, so understanding uh, looks like something is taxable for r and o r r o r something something is there uh, that something something people will never pass this exam because that something will never be uh, actually uh, converted into the correct solutions so everything has to be perfect precise then only we'll we'll get good marks and uh, pass this exam so be very careful taxation is not such a subject where overall understanding is enough to pass average level of effort average level of memory is enough to pass no it is not so you have to be absolutely 100% precise and precision is what is required here that is the nature of the subject of course that is the nature of many subjects in chartered accountancy but this is also like that so the provisions have to be perfectly applied because this business is in mumbai automatically it is taxable that is where our focus should be since it is earned in india it is taxable in all cases that's all we earned that he will give 100 things we don't care about them those are all irrelevant then the next point uh, which is 12th point is about income from property situated in pakistan received there this is also computed computed means we don't need to give any uh, deduction under section 24a of 30% since already it is computed income from house property so we don't care pakistan bangladesh uh, some other country indonesia england doesn't matter anywhere in the world whatever income received for rr taxable 16000 blindly taxable for rr then comes only rnor and nr in this case it is definitely not taxable for rnor and nr why because the asset is situated outside india means income is accrued outside india earned also outside india clearly given income from property situated in pakistan received there there means pakistan only outside india only so once income is earned outside india received outside india nothing will be taxable for rnor and nr that is point number 12 then point number 13 this is also an important point past foreign untaxed income brought to india during the previous year 5000 rupees important point past untaxed foreign income now in this previous year it is brought to india first of all we have to ask a question sir that does it does it really count as an income is it considered as a receipt is it considered as an income absolutely no because this income is not first of all earned in the previous year it is earned sometime long back when we don't care past 
Some time back, it was earned where? Outside India. It was not taxed then. That also we don't care. We don't care because if it was taxed then, it should have been taxed then. Now, if that is brought to India, that is not related to the previous year only. If it is not related to the previous year, how will anything be taxable? Nothing will be taxable. Again, you have to go back to the core points. How taxability arises? Taxability arises on three things. One, residential status of the SSE. Two, the place of accrual or place of receipt of the income. Three, time period in which the income has been actually earned. If that is not earned in the previous year, it is not taxable for everybody. So we don't care about residential status also. If there is any item like past untaxed income brought to India during the previous year, it is not at all income. Even if it is income also, it is not related to the previous year. And it is not related to the previous year. How can we include it here? Because we are calculating the income of this SSC for the assessment year 2021. So it will definitely not form part of this calculation. So 5000 should be what? Simply ignored. It should not be included at all. And you should write a note for that. Definitely. Then the next point that is 14th point. Income from agricultural land in Nepal. Received there and then brought to India. See brought to India is never a receipt. So forget about brought to India, brought to India. That doesn't have any taxability. doesn't have any impact. It should be always ignored. Brought to India is not important point. Where it is earned, where it is received that matters. Earned in Nepal. Nepal is not India. Nepal is a different country. Uh, so definitely it is not earned in India. However, however, it is received also in Nepal. Now the question comes, sir, agricultural income, na, agricultural income exempt, na? no sir, no not exempt. If the agricultural income is earned in India, that is exempt. If the agricultural income is earned outside India, that is not exempt. Dividend from an Indian company is exempt. Dividend received from a foreign company is not exempt. So when we talk about section 10.1 or 10.34, we have to be very clear the source of income. Agricultural income exempt yes but when only when that is from an agricultural land situated in india now this agricultural land is situated in nepal so it becomes taxable for ror also definitely it becomes taxable nothing as exemption no exemption here however however for rnor and nr nothing will be taxable why is that since the income has been earned outside india received also outside india because land is outside india nepal Received also in Nepal, there only. So, nothing is taxable for RNOR and NR. After it was brought to India, after whatever happened to that, remitted to India, that is all immaterial. That doesn't matter. Again and again, again, we have to observe one thing. Accrual and receipt is what matters. Remittance does not matter. So, accrual happened outside India. Receipt happened. First receipt happened outside India. Both outside India, then nothing is taxable for RNOR also, NR also. That is point number 14. These are some of the points. And further, some more points are there. Income from a profession in Kenya, which was set up in India, received there, but spent in India. See, unnecessary information. Spent in India, not spent. He has just distributed it. He just threw in the Hussein Sagar. All these things are immaterial. How does it matter? Spent where is the complete useless thing? That is absolutely useless information in this entire point. But other things, yes. Of course, for five, for ROR, we don't worry. Because everything is taxable for ROR. Uh, Kenya also, Uganda also, Nigeria also, everywhere. Wherever the income is received for ROR, everything is taxable. So, 5,000 blindly put it in ROR. No problem. For ROR, we have to read it once again. Profession in Kenya. Profession is in Kenya. But set up in India. Set up in India. So, here ROR provision again you have to remember. ROR, there is one special provision. What is that? If any income is received from any business which is controlled from India or profession set up in India, that would be taxable for RNOR, but that would not be taxable for NR. Even though the profession was set up in India, that is not taxable for non resident since income is not earned in India. Income is earned outside India only. Received also outside India only. When both are outside India, for non resident, nothing is taxable. Normally for RNOR also nothing is taxable, but this is a special case. Why? Because this income is coming from a profession which was set up in India. So for RNOR, 
ఫైవ్ థౌజండ్ విల్ బి ట్యాక్సబుల్ ఆర్ఓఆర్ ఎనీవే అంటే అమౌంట్ ఈస్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ ఫర్ నాన్ రెసిడెంట్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ దెన్ దర్ ఇస్ అనదర్ పాయింట్ దట్ ఈస్ గిఫ్ట్ రిసీవ్డ్ ఆన్ ద అకేషన్ ఆఫ్ హిజ్ వెడ్డింగ్ ట్వంటీ థౌజండ్ రూపీస్ సో వన్ మోర్ ప్రొవిజన్ వన్ మోర్ ప్రొవిజన్ విచ్ వీ డోంట్ నో ఐ నో దట్ వీ డోంట్ నో వీ డోంట్ నో దట్ బట్ నౌ యూ నో దట్ వన్ మోర్ ప్రొవిజన్ వీ హ్యావ్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ దట్ ప్రొవిజన్ హియర్ ఇన్ అడిషన్ టు సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద థింగ్స్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ యూ కెన్ హ్యావ్ అనదర్ ప్రొవిజన్ రిలేటెడ్ టు ఇన్కమ్ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ సోర్సెస్ సెక్షన్ ఫిఫ్టీ సిక్స్ ఆల్ సో మెనీ సబ్ సెక్షన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ బట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ పుట్ టుగెదర్ సెక్షన్ ఫిఫ్టీ సిక్స్ వీ కాల్ గిఫ్ట్ గిఫ్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ రిలేటివ్స్ గిఫ్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ రిలేటివ్స్ ఆర్ గిఫ్ట్ ఇన్ మ్యారేజ్ ఆర్ ఆన్ ద అకేషన్ ఆఫ్ మ్యారేజ్ కెన్ కాల్ ఇట్ బోత్ ఆర్ కంప్లీట్లీ నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ నాట్ అట్ ఆల్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ కంప్లీట్లీ నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ అ డిడక్షన్ దిస్ ఇస్ స్పెషల్ ప్రొవిజన్ ఇన్ రిలేషన్ టు ఇన్కమ్ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ సోర్సెస్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ దట్ వీఆర్ టాకింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ గిఫ్ట్ ప్రొవిజన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ రిలేటివ్స్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ రిసీవ్డ్ నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ ఇఫ్ గిఫ్ట్ ఈస్ రిసీవ్డ్ ఆన్ ద అకేషన్ ఆఫ్ వెడ్డింగ్ ఆఫ్ అన్ ఇండివిజువల్ ద ఎస్ఎస్సి నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ద అమౌంట్ ఇట్ మే బి ట్వంటీ క్రోర్స్ ఆల్సో ఫైవ్ థౌజండ్ క్రోర్స్ ఆల్సో నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ నాట్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ యాజ్ సింపుల్ యాజ్ దట్ ప్రొవిజన్ సేస్ నథింగ్ ఈస్ ట్యాక్సబుల్ ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ గిఫ్ట్ రిసీవ్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ రిలేటివ్స్ అగైన్ హూ ఇస్ రిలేటివ్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ వీ విల్ డెఫినెట్లీ డిస్కస్ ఇన్ ద చాప్టర్ ఇన్ కమ్ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ సోర్సెస్ దర్ ఇస్ అ బిగ్ ప్రో డిస్కషన్ ఆన్ దట్ వీ కెన్ నాట్ నో ఎవ్రీథింగ్ నౌ బట్ వీ షుడ్ నో ద ఎసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఈవెన్ హియర్ ఆల్సో వీ డోంట్ నో ఎవ్రీథింగ్ అగ్రికల్చరల్ ఇన్కమ్ ఇస్ అ సెపరేట్ స్మాల్ టాపిక్ వీ డి నాట్ డిస్కస్ బట్ వీ నో అగ్రికల్చర్ ఇన్కమ్ ఇస్ ఎగ్జాప్ట్ Of course, this is just a straight point. We know this already. Dividend also has a special points to be noted. We don't know any of them. But on a broad basis, main core provision we know. Core provision is what? 1034 exempts the dividend received from Indian companies if it is not exceeding 10 lakhs rupees. That we know. Same way other things also. There are some other points to be noted. ATC is a huge section. But we don't know all of that. But what we know? If there is anything that is like uh, insurance premium paid or any other investment that is made, then under itc you can get a deduction of up to 150000 rupees so big discussion on these things will happen later these two things no discussion this is enough but this is a big discussion of course 56 is a big section in that gift itself is a big section so where uh, now what we are uh, supposed to know is gift received from relatives is not taxable and gift received in the marriage of an individual on the occasion of marriage of an individual is also not taxable irrespective of the amount so that we have to apply here so 17th point or 16th point that is that's what we are talking gift received on the occasion of his wedding 20000 rupees for nobody for anybody it is not taxable not taxable means not at all taxable for anybody so that's it that is 20000 rupees nil 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 next next point is interest on savings bank deposit account in uh, deposit in state bank of india this is also interesting one interest on savings bank account deposit see if it is state bank of india also canara bank also indian bank also we don't care that doesn't matter don't worry about that what you have to focus on savings bank deposit not a fixed deposit savings account if any savings account interest is there should it be taxable or not taxable of course it is taxable for everybody sir why sir why everybody sir because it is state bank of india so one basic assumption state bank of india is now here we are talking about uh, state bank of india in india uh, don't again uh, assume that uh, uh, there is a london branch of state bank of india also what if uh, amount is deposited by a non resident in london state bank of india and london state bank of india gives uh, interest to that person in london then what then of course it is not taxable but can we assume all those things here when the word used is state bank of india we have to understand that it is in india only nothing is mentioned uh, sbi london branch sbi bahrain branch sbi dubai branch sbi has hundreds of overseas branches and america itself it has lots of branches does not matter we cannot assume those things that is a wrong thought process uh, yeah more information we know sometimes uh, thought process will also be going wrong uh, but doesn't matter that is we have to brought it bring it back that thought if it all it comes we have to bring it back if nothing is mentioned about a foreign country you cannot assume that it is a foreign country it is talking about state bank of india means we are talking about india only that's it so once the interest uh, is on the savings bank deposit of uh, state bank of india 
it is earned naturally in India. It received also in India because bank account is in India. Hence, it is taxable for everybody. Now, some people will definitely think about deduction where there is a deduction of up to how much? 10,000 rupees on the savings bank account interest under ATTTA. Then again, question comes TTA is applicable, TTB is applicable, TTA applicable because this age is 45 years. Should we think all that now? No, we should not even think about that. That comes later after calculating the gross total income. Then we should come back, no doubt. Then we should give deduction, no doubt. But not while including it here. While including it here, you should not deduct 10,000 and take it as to 2,000. This is what people do mistake. People will take 12,000 minus a deduction of 10,000. So 2,000 is taxable, they will write. This is absolutely wrong. Because this 10,000 is not an exemption. That is the exact difference between exemption and deduction. Deduction is first included in the income. Then later it is deducted. Uh, exemption means it is excluded completely. It is not included first of all. It is excluded from the inclusion of that money into the total income of the SSC itself. So that is, that is exemption. Exemption is different. Deduction is different. Exemption is what we did in the uh, first question. For example here. Dividend from an Indian company, agricultural income from the land in Gujarat, the 6,000, 25,000. This was exempt, not at all included there. That is different. This is different. So this first should be included because it is taxable. Is it taxable, not taxable? Absolutely taxable. You cannot say it is not taxable because it is included in the gross total income of the SSC first. Later we will give deduction. Yes, we should remember that. We cannot forget that. So make it a point. We give a deduction of 10,000 rupees later. Not now, uh, not from 12,000, from the gross total income, this deduction will be given, not from the income itself, that difference you have to identify. So 12,000 taxable for everybody. Next, income from business in Russia, controlled from Russia only, doesn't matter, for ROR everything is taxable. Naturally for RNOR and NR nothing is taxable, why? Because the business is outside India, controlled also outside India, received also outside India, nothing is mentioned, don't assume it is received in India and all. If it is received in India, that is a fact, it should be given in the question. Uh, such type of unnecessary assumptions should not be taken. Uh, so this is uh, provisions wise, whatever the provision is given in the act, that is 100% clear. There are no gray areas. As far as residential status and tax incidence is concerned, this chapter does not have gray areas. As far as problem solving is concerned, it has too many gray areas in real life. Like uh, what is the place of effective management, uh, big, big, big loophole. A big uh, litigation point but we don't worry about that it doesn't use it is not useful for problem solving same way what is a business connection oh huge discussion real life not on problems so when it comes to problems things are crystal clear don't try to complicate them don't try to mess them up with our unnecessary thoughts and unnecessary assumptions this is where people take assumptions which are not required so what is given in the fact as a, as a fact in the question that only should be considered income is coming from a business in Russia, outside India, controlled from Russia, outside India. So both are outside India, nothing is taxable naturally for both R and R also and NR also. That's how it happens. That is uh, point number 18, that is 20,000 rupees. Then we have dividend from Reliance Petroleum Limited, an Indian company. Here we have to once again apply exemption provisions. What is that? That is Reliance Petroleum Limited, Indian company, whatever that company it may be, we don't care. Indian company, dividend received from an Indian company is exempt from tax under section 1034 up to 10 lakhs rupees. This is after all 5000 rupees. So definitely it is exempt for everybody. 1034 exemption applicable for everybody. Nothing is taxable. So that is a point. There are various things. Here also there is nil nil. Here also there is nil nil. There are so many nils here also. Reasons are not same. That's what we should understand. Why this is nil? This is not even income received in the previous year. So it is not at all called as income of this year. So it is not included. This two why nil? This two why nil? Because they are not coming under the purview of Income Tax Act. There is no tax incidence on them. So nil. Then why this nil? 19th point nil. That is for the dividend. This is not nil because of tax incidence. There is tax incidence. It is an Indian company. Definitely income is earned in India, accrued in India. But because there is a specific exemption for that, it is not taxable. 
So this other things if you say not taxable that is not taxable because of tax incidents not being there. These things if we say not taxable this is not taxable because it is exempt from tax. So when we simply say not taxable that generally indicates tax incidents itself is not there. But ideally what you should call this 19th point as which we cannot call it not taxable not taxable ideally we should use the word exempt that is why I always suggest it within the answer don't write anything don't write not taxable and all write nil nil is the common word for all nothing wrong with that all are nil 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 only wherever there is blank here that is all nil and in exams don't write this just a dash also ideally you write the letter clearly the word n i l nil then write the reason be below the answer about the working notes of why is it nil, why is it not included. That, that gives clarity. If you write here itself exempt, somebody will write here exempt. Technically that is wrong because how can you exempt somebody who is earning income in Russia, how can you exempt in India, this is not possible. So if you write something which is wrong technically that will lead to bad impression. So don't write it at all, rather you be silent, you just say nil. Whatever you want to write, you write in the working notes. Don't show that in the main answer. That is a, a small tactic we have to use in the presentation. Ultimately, what application of your provisions matters. Total answers definitely matter. But in the presentation also, we have to be little, I would say, smart. Then definitely the overall uh, score will become better. That's it. That is about 19th point, which is not taxable. In other words, actually it is exempt. 1034 exempts it. Nobody gets attracted with any taxability. Once again, I am understand the difference between this 12,000 and this uh, 5,000. 12,000 we did not say it is exempt. We did not ex exempt 10,000 and uh, we did not include 2,000 here. We said entire 12,000 is taxable. But it may be eligible for deduction later, not now. But this is not all included in gross total income. So what are section 10 sections? All the various subsections and clauses of section 10, what are they? Those are the incomes which do not form part of the income of the SSC at all. So they will not be included in the income of the SSC only. So they will be completely not taxable at this point itself. So 000 for all the three kinds of SSCs. Then the last one, agricultural income from a land in Rajasthan. Same right, agricultural income for a, from a land in India. Automatically not taxable because it is also exempt. Section is different, that is section 10, 1. So various points are there here. Section 10, 1 is applicable for this point. Section 1034 is applicable for this point, which we applied. Of course, some all other cases, section 9 is applicable in many points where the income is deemed to accrue or arise in India. So once we have all these things, just simply total them. So what is the total of all of them? That is, all are included, yes. So that is how much? 3,47,000 for ROR, 2,13,000 for RNOR and 1,78,000 for NR. That is going to be what? What should we write here? What should we write here? This is not total income sir. This is gross total income. That is gross total income. Okay. Not total income. Be very, very clear on that. But what is asked here is total income. So, how to get total income from gross total income? Now, we will give deduction related to that interest on savings bank account deposit. That one we will give now. That is what? Deduction under section 80 TTA. 80 TTA deduction that is. How much is that? Maximum of 10,000 only. Why 10,000 only? Why not 50,000? Because this guy is not a senior citizen. If it was 80 TTB, he would have got a deduction of 50,000, but now no. So then naturally what is the total income or taxable income, either way you can call it. From this, reduce the deduction of 10,000, automatically we will get the total income of the SSC, which is the taxable income on which the tax has to be paid by the SSCs. Of course, if at all tax liability is also asked, then how much will be the tax liability for each of them? For everybody it is nil only. Why? For a resident ROR, for a resident SSC, automatically up to 5 lakhs rupees nothing is there. Even though 
beyond 2 lakhs 50 thousand there is a 5 percent tax rate since there is a rebate of section 87a you don't need to worry about any taxability up to 5 lakhs rupees so nothing is taxable here it is less than basic exemption limit here also it is less than basic exemption limit so tax liability is not there for anybody don't worry about that every time that is not our objective income tax paper objective is not just to calculate tax liability that is only just one of them but mainly what is the objective is to compute the total income of the SSC. This is the major objective. Tax liability calculation is just clerical, which we already know that. So here, this is the total income of the SSC. It's a comprehensive question, almost covering every provision of this chapter, almost. So good question. But as it is 20, 20 points, definitely will not be asked in the examination. Whatever number of points are given, we will answer in the same way with the proper heading, particulars, ROR, RNR, NR. Particulars you have to write descriptions, uh, not numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, not like that. Write the descriptions here. Then amounts you have to write, total them. If any deductions are there under section 80, give them. Then automatically you will get the total income taxable in the hands of each type of SSC. That's it. That is about one of the other questions in ICI material. Well, let us move on to another question. This is also there in the ICI material, but don't try to expect the same model question this is one more thing i observed in some people earlier uh, some of the exams internally conducted residential status question the moment they see they will put r or r n or n r without reading what is the requirement of the question also so not necessarily the question will be always same in this question we needed that first question was like that because it was asked in the second question it was not not asked like that it is only for one particular person david that's all his residential status was non-resident automatic so no three things required only one thing one calculation same way here also residential status was not given we calculated we determined so one residential status one calculation here also same residential status we know that is non-resident one calculation here again three are there so don't assume that every problem will have three three different different residential statuses always r or r n or n r like that don't blindly do that read the question carefully uh, what is the requirement of the question? Now the next question is different, a little bit. Ramesh and Suresh. Yeah, those are the only case, the five star people. So Ramesh and Suresh are brothers and they earned the following incomes during the financial year 1920. Naturally, everybody of our SSCs will earn their income in financial year 1920 only because our assessment year is 2021. So that, that is natural. There is no special in that, speciality in that in any case. So throughout our uh, learning process, everybody, all SCs will earn income in that year only. For that only, we are calculating income for the assessment year 2021. But read the information carefully. Two people are there, Ramesh Suresh. Ramesh settled in Canada in 1996 and uh, Suresh settled in Delhi. So settled, settled is the word used. Nothing else is given. So what we should understand? What we should understand? We are taking this names first. One is Ramesh and one is Suresh. Okay, fine. Right. Ramesh and Suresh. Two people are there. What is the residential status of Ramesh? Heading and all normal. I don't have to tell everything. Statement showing computation of total income for the assessment year 2021. Particulars, Ramesh, Suresh. Amount, of course, on the top right hand corner, you can write rupees. These all things are common in every question. Every time I don't have to tell. Particulars and this... Uh, Two SSCs are there, Ramesh and Suresh. But main important point here to note is, what is the residential status of these people that we should know very clearly. Uh, this is not one SSC, three different possibilities. No. Normally other questions like this question had one SSC, Anirudh, three different possibilities. What if R or what if R and or what if NR. Same with uh, this also, where uh, one SSC, somebody, we don't know the name, three different possibilities. No, here there are not one SSC, there are two SSCs. And each of them uh, will not have 100 possibilities. Each of them has only one possibility of residential status. Any SSC will have for a previous year only one residential status. How is it possible to have multiple residential statuses? So here these are three different cases. Here it is one SSC, one residential status. That we should first of all identify. Ramesh settled in Canada. So naturally what will be his residential status? Non-resident. Suresh settled in Delhi. He is there only, Delhi only. No other information given. Again don't say assuming that Ramesh is also, though he is Canada, like Akshay Kumar, he is in India. No, not like that. Though he is a Canadian citizen, we don't need to assume any other things. Not necessary. That is none of our business. Simply, just we have to take it. What is there very clearly, evidently, 
visible on the question uh, not to have any any wild assumptions that will be absolutely wrong so what is the meaning here what what does uh, the question convey to us sir ramesh is in canada means he is a non resident simple that's all no need of any other uh, new new things to be imagined about it uh, suresh is in delhi so he is resident when he is in when he is in delhi naturally he is aru aru everybody you and me everybody whoever is in india who is normally living in india everybody is aru aru only so simply the residential status of these two people is that and our taxability should deter, should be determined according to their residential status so be very careful on that one by one let us take the points point number 1 so the point number 1 is about uh, <clears throat> this first point interest on canada development bonds uh, 50% of interest is only received in india so understand very carefully we are talking about two different people different different amounts also don't take same amount for everybody like this 20000 20000 20000 like that don't take that is a mistake people do no this 35000 is a different amount related to mr ramesh who is a different person who is a different human being 40000 is a different amount related to a different person mr suresh who is a different ssc different human being so don't mix them up at all so let us look at ramesh 35000 first okay ramesh is a non resident that should be kept in mind uh, before solving the question so non resident uh, 35000 normally it should not be taxable because interest is on canada development bonds normally it should not be taxable however however half of that will be taxable in india why 50% of that is received in india 50% of 35000 will be how much 17500 of course that will be taxable in the hands of ramesh don't put 17500 for suresh it is a different amount amount is for suresh how much he received from interest on canada development bonds 40000 he received entire 40000 will be taxable don't look at 50% and all that why sir first of all you have to keep in mind suresh is a ror the residential status has to be clearly kept in mind this problem is not complicated it's only the psychological strength and focus that that is required of the people while thinking about ramesh we have to think about ramesh only and we have to keep in mind he is non resident while to looking at suresh details we have to look at suresh details only and we have to understand and remember he is a resident and ordinary resident so that is where people mix these things up that's only simple thing not a complicated thing but once again requires lot of focus nothing else more focus it's not a big deal anybody can just like that solve this question applying the same provisions nothing new here nothing special here so ramesh being a non resident interest on canada development bonds is not taxable but still because 50% of that is received in india 17500 is taxable suresh 40000 he received from anywhere in the world we don't care he will get entire global income taxable in india so 40000 is taxable for suresh automatically no need to look at where it is received and all that second point dividends from british company received in london for ramesh nothing will be taxable why non resident income earned outside india received also outside india for rr fully taxable why once again because he is rr when he is rr global income is taxable irrespective of where is it received i will identify the amounts carefully this is 28000 for ramesh not taxable 20000 for suresh that is taxable clear next uh, see you know how simple it will be in the examination to uh, actually confuse the students very simple thing imagine the question is asked like this like this suresh and ramesh are brothers suresh settled in canada ramesh settled in delhi right in the question they will give in the sequence suresh and ramesh in the details they will give ramesh and suresh half of the people will go to wrong answers i am guaranteed i can guarantee that 100% i am confident on that why because the people don't read it carefully because they always think this sequence and this sequence should be same who said that here it is same so don't worry it's okay i'm telling lot of times it so happened not just in taxation paper in accounts paper also two two companies details they will give the details here in the description will be in one sequence a limited and b limited they will give or uh, here they will give b limited and a limited and people will uh, just don't observe this they blindly go a limited b limited a limited b limited they take all the details as if they are in the same sequence so simple things not complicated but why people lose marks unnecessarily i would say missing attention to detail attention to detail is very important accuracy precision is very important in this course and particularly for taxation also the same rule applies so here we don't have that issue ramesh suresh 
clearly we have to be very clear about their residential status ramesh settled in canada whether ramesh is first or second we don't care ramesh is a non resident suresh settled in delhi so suresh is a resident and ordinary resident this has to be perfectly written first if this is wrong the entire answer will be wrong so be very careful in reading the question any small error in reading the question or by mistake i, I thought ramesh is rr and suresh is a non resident zero marks only will come no because all these answers will get swapped and nothing will be marked with any uh, nothing will be awarded any marks so simple mistake it may seem which is only just a a small error it may look but ultimately it will result in complete loss of marks so be careful that is why i always tell read the question carefully read the question very carefully that matters a lot if we read if we read the question carefully problem is half solved correctly if we read the question wrong naturally a solution will go wrong garbage in garbage out simple logic if garbage is going in output also will be garbage so wrong reading of the question will give wrong out so be careful once again ramesh suresh is the sequence given ramesh suresh is the sequence given ramesh is non resident suresh is rr first case we know already because it is received half in india it was taxable half for ramesh uh, it doesn't matter for suresh because everything is taxable for rr same with the second point also for suresh everything is taxable 20000 but for ramesh it is not taxable since it is earned outside india received also outside india third point once again read carefully profits from business in nagpur but managed from london once again trap point business is in nagpur sir when business is in nagpur why should we care whether it is managed from london or new york or somewhere else we don't care why income earned in india it is taxable for everybody or 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 and or and doesn't matter so for ramesh also it will be taxable suresh also it will be taxable both 1 lakh and 1 lakh 40000 fully those amounts will be taxable since the business is in nagpur same way fourth point short term capital gain on sale of shares of an indian company received in india received in india also we don't care if it is indian company's shares that is enough because any sale or transfer of any capital asset situated in india is deemed to accrue or arise in india so that will be taxable for everybody even ramesh even though is a non resident still it will be taxable why it is the gain on the sale of shares of indian company of course it is received in india so double dhamaka in any case it is taxable for ramesh suresh we don't have to worry everything is taxable for him so for suresh anyway 90000 is taxable be careful with the amounts also ramesh 60000 suresh 90000 income from a business in chennai no need to think about it business is in chennai means business is in india when business is in india it is fully taxable what is there everything is taxable if the income is earned in india for everybody so for ramesh also suresh also entire amounts whatever they earned from a business done in chennai fully becomes taxable these are fifth that is fifth point sixth point fees for technical services rendered in india but received in canada see when it is rendered in india it is deemed to accrue or arise in india naturally that is taxable because section 9 once again interest royalty fees for technical services if at all that is rendered in india that is deemed to accrue or arise in india even though it is received in canada still it will become taxable in india only so that is 1 lakh rupees taxable for ramesh now for suresh nothing is taxable this is where once again most of the people do the mistake this they will they will take 1 lakh for suresh also why r or no r or everything is taxable baba he did not receive any income only he received zero income when zero income he received nothing will be taxable right so be careful once again don't just care, get carried away with the numbers this one lakh who received ramesh received suresh nothing he received nothing he earned zero zero means zero only so it is not exempt it is not not taxable first of all there is no income for him when there is no income the question of whether it is taxable or not whether it is exempt or not whether it is deductible or not all those questions become completely ridiculous so this sixth point suresh doesn't have any income so the question of taxability does not arise that is the point to be noted don't blindly take 1 lakh rupees to uh, suresh also that will be wrong uh, i am telling these mistakes because i have observed people doing these mistakes psychological mistakes not um, that they don't know uh, the provision in spite of knowing the provision still people do mistakes that is where we have to be careful so that is sixth point seventh point interest on a savings bank deposit in yuko bank delhi 
because delhi bank definitely it is taxable for both people why income is earned in india so 7000 rupees for ramesh and 12000 rupees for suresh taxable for everybody since the income is earned in india property is in india that is uk bank delhi interest is coming on that property income earned on that property is fully taxable that is any asset is uh, considered to be in india any income received from that will be taxable in india since it is deemed to accrue or arise in india so every time we don't have to apply that simply anything earned in india is taxable that's enough so 7000 12000 taxable for both of course don't think about deduction now we'll come to that later the eighth point agricultural income from a land situated in andhra pradesh no nothing will be taxable why because andhra pradesh is also in india when agricultural income is there in india and any income is earned from such agricultural land nothing will be taxable so 55000 is exempt 45000 is exempt for both ramesh and suresh nothing will be taxable zero taxable arises from agricultural income under section 10 1 such income is exempt then look at this ninth point interesting one once again rent received in respect of a house property the word used is not income from house property the word used is rent received from a house property at bhopal so since it is bhopal bhopal is in india that we should know basic general knowledge we should have so when bhopal is in india and any inter, any income received from any property situated in india that is deemed to accrue or arise in india it should be taxable for both of them so 1 lakh rupees and 60000 rupees yes but be careful don't write this because it is not income from house property what is the word used that is rent received so how should you write it in the examination you should write only the final answer here how much will be taxable for ramesh only 70000 why 30% standard deduction is available you can show that in the working note separately 1 lakh rupees rent received minus deduction under section 24 a that is 30% of the rent that should be given here so after that the actual taxability will be 70% that is 70000 same way you can apply the same formula here 60000 into 0.7 that means taxable amount will be 42000 but don't write this is computer i am doing but we have to write there in the working note separately 1 lakh rupees minus 30% 70000 same way 60000 rupees minus 30% 18000 remaining 42000 so taxable income from house property is 70 and 42000 for each of them ramesh and suresh respectively then the next one life insurance premium paid ramesh paid nothing suresh paid some 30000 is it income first of all is it income if you pay something and it is considered as income no sir income means what we receive not what we pay then why is it given sir yes it is given for section 80c like 80c life insurance premium is also a kind of saving or investment under 80c somebody can claim a deduction of up to 150000 rupees here contribution is only 30000 deduction can be claimed later when but after calculating the gross total income only that can be claimed so first calculate gross total income how much is that for ramesh how much is that for suresh this is gross total income clear yeah. then deduction under section 80 c ramesh will not get anything why is that because he did not pay any life insurance premium if he doesn't pay how can he get deduction suresh will get 30000 why is that because he paid 30000 life insurance premium up to 150000 it is okay for him so that much deduction can be claimed so total income is how much whatever gross total income minus deduction in this case there is no deduction so it will be same for uh, uh, suresh the final total income is going to be 3 lakhs 84000 for Ramesh, the final total income is going to be four lakhs thirty-four thousand five hundred. That is the total income of Ramesh and Suresh, according to their residential status and tax incidence of different different types of incomes what they have received. That's it. That is the final answer: four thirty-four five hundred and three lakhs eighty-four thousand. That is another question in the ICI material. then moving on to the last question uh, this is a case based question the five marks perfect question like this many times it was given question is examine with reasons no 
word used see the questions carefully here what is asked compute compute is the word used here what is asked compute here what is asked simple question case based question is this chargeable to tax if so why that's what we should write though it is not asked here determine residential status and examine examine means once again theory you have to just tell whether it is taxable or not taxable once again here what is the question you have to exactly understand what is asked compute compute means calculation so what is asked is important to note here also compute total income so we calculated so compute means compute if it is not asked to compute please don't compute please don't do that if it is asked to compute then only compute you have to understand the question very carefully not doing it blindly here what is asked not compute question is examine with reasons whether the following transactions attract income tax in India in the hands of the recipients. That is the question. And by the way, here, the recipient is not one only. In this case, there are two different SSCs, Ramesh and Suresh. Here, there is only one SSC, but possible residential statuses we have discussed. Here, there is only one SSC, Kulashekara. Here, there is one SSC, Soham. Here, there is one SSC, David. Here, there is one SSC, Anirudh. Here, there are different SSCs. First case, John, he says. Second case, you don't know name. Third case, Ram, he says. So, how can you compute? How can you total something for somebody? No. You cannot say computation of total income of so-and-so person because there are so many people. So, nothing to compute here. So, why I am telling all this is read the question carefully so that you can plan the presentation of the answer. Don't blindly always do particular amount total. No. Not like that. This question is not about computation. This question is simply about uh, basically stating whether this particular income is taxable or not taxable. You should write full details. Each, each of the points should have clear explanation of why something is taxable or not taxable. But now we are only just going to write down whether it is taxable or not taxable. In exam you have to write details and reasons. Why is it? Reasons. That is a question. Examine with the reasons whether the following transactions attract income tax in India or not. In other words, simply is asking whether tax incidences there or not if there yes we would say taxable if it is not there we would say no it is not taxable simple but taxable not taxable will not give you five marks this is a five marks question each point you have to write whether it is taxable or not and then you have to write the reason also be very careful on writing the explanations don't write stories directly a provision and then that itself will suffice in substantiating or what we can say supporting our logic of why is it taxable or not taxable one by one let us see first question first point salary paid by central government to mr john a citizen of india seven lakhs rupees for the services rendered outside india outside india taxable sir even though he is a non-resident also even though he is a resident also doesn't matter because that is a income which is deemed to accrue or arise in India and it is salary not perquisite salvances if the same is perquisite salvances that would have been exempt there also you better not say not taxable you better say exempt according to section 107 no this is not exempt why it is salary salary paid by whom central government to whom somebody with that name we don't care citizen of India yes that matters that matters a lot citizen of India only it is definitely taxable if Indian government pays a salary to some outside citizen outside India that will not be taxable that cannot be taxable we don't have purview on that but Indian government pays salary to a citizen of India outside India it is still taxable under section 9 looks ridiculous but we cannot help it no that is law law says it is taxable so it is taxable that's all so this guy is non-resident it doesn't matter sir still it is taxable he rendered services outside India na, uh, because the income accrued outside India na. yes sir yes still it is taxable but actually he received also income outside India. No? Yes sir, still it is taxable. He is non-resident. No sir, still it is taxable. Why? Because the law said, very simple, straight point. Section 9 had a point about this guy who renders services outside India but receives some income from central government, basically salary income. Then that amount is deemed to accrue or arise in India. That's what you should write in the working notes. Same sentence you have to write. Salary received by an Indian citizen for the services rendered outside India from the government is deemed to accrue or arise in India. Hence, the amount of 7 lakhs rupees received by Mr. John is taxable. That is the statement you have to write. Okay. 
I'm just writing taxable, but majorly that is a final answer, but you should develop it with some basic formation of sentences. And at this level, uh, definitely we are not going to learn about how to form sentences and all that is school stuff, school stuff, right? Anyway, second point interest on the money is borrowed from outside India, 5 lakhs rupees by a non-resident for the purpose of business within India, say Mumbai, say Delhi, say Bangalore, that we don't care. Within India, that matters. Say Mumbai and all is useless. Uh, so basically what happened, interest on money, which is borrowed from outside India. Who borrowed that? Non-resident borrowed that. It doesn't matter. Borrowed also from outside India. Doesn't matter that. But what matters here? What matters? That is the loan taken for the purpose of business within India. So when it is within India, definitely that becomes taxable. Once again, same section 9. In section 9, 1, it is clearly mentioned that interest, if it is related to the monies borrowed for the purpose of a business within India that is deemed to accrue or arise in India. You have to use this word every time. Deemed to accrue or arise in India. So it is taxable. Now some people will write over oh, enthusiastically. 5 lakhs rupees will be taxable. Huh? 5 lakhs rupees, is it interest or monies borrowed? How do we know that? So don't worry about amounts here. That is where. Where we have to be focused on the amounts. Where we have calculations. Here amounts are important. Here why should we care the amounts. We don't care about the amounts. Nobody worries about that. What matters is. Whether it is taxable or not taxable. That's all. You just write that. In interest received. For the pur uh, interest received. In respect of the monies. Which are borrowed for the purpose of a business in India. Is deemed to accrue or arise in India. Hence it is taxable. That's it. So. That is second point. Then the third point comes once again. Post Office Savings Bank interest 19,000 rupees received by a resident SSC Ram aged 46 years. See post office means Indian post office only not America post office. Irrespective of that since he is a resident SSC it becomes naturally taxable. That is taxable. However, however, there is once again there is an exemption here under section 10 of around uh, 3500 rupees exemption is there for post office savings bank account holders uh, it is not a deduction it is an exemption so there are actually two things because we are not calculating any income of mr ram we don't need to really worry about that uh, if you just want to focus on whether it attracts income tax in india or not we can stop there is it taxable yes because in the post office savings bank is a resident SSC. definitely it is taxable you can stop there but just after, if at all you know the exemptions also, uh, there will be an exemption of 3,500 rupees available for Mr. Ram under section 10. Uh, so that is one exemption. Anyway, we are not calculating anything. You can just write that point. Of course, can Mr. Ram claim ATTTA deduction also later under after the computation of his gross total income, which we don't know. But can he claim that? Yes, he can do that also. Up to... 10,000 rupees he can claim. So actually, effectively out of this 19,000, how much will be finally taxable? Finally, after reduction, after exemption. So 3,500 exemption and 10,000 rupees deduction. Total 13,500 rupees can be reduced from this 19,000, which means 13,500 if you reduce from 19,000, 5,500 only finally becomes taxable in the hands of Mr. Ram. If you know all those provisions, you can write it. Otherwise, actually, that is not the objective of this point. Here, the question is whether it attracts income tax in India or not. Answer is yes, it is taxable since it is a income earned in India by a resident. For resident, anyway, anything is taxable. So, taxability wise, yes, it is taxable. Exemption is there? Yes, sir, there is exemption. Reduction is there? Yes, there is a reduction. So, those things come later. Anyway. Point number four, royalty paid by a resident to a non-resident in respect of a business carried on outside India. See, when the business is carried on outside India, no, it is not taxable. Simple. Why? The royalty is related to which business? That is related to a business outside India. Who received it? A non-resident received it. Paid by a resident, it doesn't matter. Who pays it, who cares? Who receives it? He is our SSC. Who is our SSC here in this particular case? Non-resident. Non-resident received something in relation to a business outside India. Then how can it be taxable in India? Not possible. So since it is a business outside India, for a non-resident it is not taxable. That is a point number four. Point number five. 
Legal charges 5 lakhs rupees paid in Delhi. In Delhi, paid in Delhi, that is enough. It becomes taxable. Automatically, it becomes taxable. Why? Paid in Delhi, na? Paid in Delhi is enough. Irrespective of residential status for anybody, it will be taxable. To a lawyer of United Kingdom who came to India for visiting and all that, Delhi High Court, he did, Supreme Court, he did, all stories, we don't care. The moment you see 5 lakhs rupees paid in Delhi, income received in India, automatically taxable. Of course, it is a fees for technical service. Legal fees also is a technical service. So, technical does not mean engineering only, screwdrivers only, they have to open something, not like that. Uh, financial services, legal services, or any other consultancy services, architectural services, any of them, design services, everything is under the technical services. So, don't worry about what is technical service, what is not a technical service. Those things we don't need to worry about. All that we need to worry about is whether it is taxable or not. How do we know that? Because it is paid in Delhi, of course it is taxable. Even though if it is not paid in Delhi also, it would have been taxable. Why? Because this guy, whoever has come and argued a case at Delhi High Court, means he has rendered services in India. When you render services in India, income is earned in India. Income has accrued or arisen in India. Naturally, everything will be taxable. So, even though, let us say this 5 lakhs rupees in another case, if it is paid outside India also, still it is taxable because the services are rendered in India. So, both rendered in India means the income is accrued in India, received also in India, taxable for all kinds of SSEs. Hence, directly, irrespective of the SSE, uh, it becomes taxable. That's it. These are the final answers in relation to each of the points. Once again, let me reiterate, you will not get the marks for writing taxable, not taxable. You will get the marks for, of course, writing the description carefully. Writing the answer, of course, taxable, not taxable, you have to write clearly and very elegantly and you have to write it uh, uh, evidently. Uh, this word should be, maybe you write it in a capital letters or bold or underline something. You have to highlight this. Uh, final answer but this only will not be enough you should write first let us say taxable underline it below that write the reason then second point taxable underline that below that write the reason why is it taxable same way third point fourth point fifth point if it is taxable also or not taxable also you should write the reasons reasons will give you marks that's what you can call them working notes you can call them what are the name you want but ultimately the marks will be obtained for that purpose for that particular reason not for just writing taxable not taxable or for just doing this only numbers numbers totaling and all will not give you marks working notes important are very important in the examination for any problem residential status also is the beginning of such kind of presentation so major things irrespective of the type of question common points you have to always observe first point is read the question carefully second point is you should remember the provisions Without that, nobody can solve any questions in taxation. Provisions should be known to us. 100% thoroughly, we should know the provisions. We should remember the provisions. Then the third point is, we should be able to identify unnecessary information carefully. If it is irrelevant or relevant, we should be able to identify. Then we should also, has to, we should, our answer has to be in accordance with the question. If the answer is about examine, describe, evaluate if these are the things then you just have to write descriptive questions case based questions if the answer is compute calculate determine then you have to maybe use some numbers so main answer should be always very properly there with the numbers and uh, totals and all very uh, clearly written without much of corrections that is a presentation issue and presentation does not mean only the main answer it includes the working notes and also the main solution does not mean the only main answer it includes working notes so don't take working notes as some favor you are doing to the valuer that is what actually is going to fetch you marks so without working notes don't expect that you are going to fetch any marks in this paper a uh, lot of times general feeling of the students is because the because of various things since beginning since childhood we are used to that we are all all used to what question answer question answer that's our general mentality question was given i gave the answer now i should get marks no sir you will not get marks for the answer only at this level descriptive papers particularly so for taxation you will not get marks only for the answer answer also will get marks but answer will not get full marks answer plus proper working notes for the answer reasons for the answer logic for the answer 
sections, if at all, wherever you can refer to them, you have to refer to them. Calculations you have to show. Then that, that brings out a perfect solution for the question that is asked. Then full marks will come. Definitely it is a very scoring, uh, uh, I would say, chapter. Five marks in the pocket. Minimum. Blindly you can say, if anybody is thorough with this chapter, you, get, you got five marks. Minimum. More than that also it is quite possible. Sometimes it is given. But question from this chapter is paka. It will be there in the examination. There is no exam almost in the past where there is no question from residential status and tax incidents. It is compulsory. Definite question will be there from this chapter. So be very thorough with the provisions. Practice the problems also well. And uh, in the next uh, uh, session, we will continue the discussion with uh, some other topic after the completion of first uh, three topics we can say in general first one being basic concepts just introduction to the taxation terminology second topic being rates of tax applicable for different types of SSEs and different concepts including marginal relief etc and now the third topic is residential status and tax incidents which we have completed also and uh, all these three put together easily will constitute easily put together 8 to 10 marks, 8 minimum we can say. So theory questions will also come from first chapter. Rates of tax will definitely be useful in the paper. So these three topics itself will easily contribute 8 marks minimum, sometimes up to 10 marks also in the main exam. So don't underestimate the starter. Starter also has its own weightage. Then after completion of this starter, we will enter into the main course, actual crux and core of the income tax act that is the heads of income in the coming sessions but before that i will send you uh, an assignment or a task in relation to residential status and tax incidents you have to do that and you have to make sure that you are all thorough with the provisions and you are able to remember them and apply them once you acquire that skill then we can say this topic is done then only we can say this topic is done uh, if you are still getting confusion, is it taxable, not taxable, resident, non-resident, RNOR, RNOR, controlled, he said, all these things, if at all the brain is giving confusion, automatically that means the thoroughness is not there. If the brain is clear, giving us correct answers, then automatically we are thorough. If we are not thorough, there are two options once again. To cry that I am not able to be thorough. Second option is to become thorough by reading the provisions again and again, writing the provisions on paper practicing the questions again and again, then automatically we will become thorough. Nobody will become thorough uh, just in one shot. By listening to these lectures or just by watching the videos on mobile as if you are watching movies, I am sure nobody will become thorough. It all depends upon how you write it on paper, particularly the revision notes, whatever you write for each chapter. Not only that, also the problems that you do on paper once again, not what you watch. Watching is only a part of it. Listening in the classroom also is only a part of the learning process, but that is not the end of the learning process. We all know that. I just want to reiterate certain points again and again so that you remember them and apply them while learning. That's it. With this, we can conclude residential status and tax incidents chapter. In the next session of taxation, we'll start with the heads of incomes straight away from salaries. Till that time, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.